Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at the Draco. This is a 200 watt Joule 18650 mod that is coming from Modified very soon. As I record this, I think the release date is going to be the middle of June and it's going to be coming in at 49.99 in the UK. Now this one is it's got some bells and whistles this thing. It's got some bells and whistles and the main one is that you can customize the screen a fair old bit like change wallpapers, fonts and all that kind of stuff. I have been using this for a fair old amount of time. I've had a prototype for a couple of months now and just this week I got my hands on the final retail versions so I'm now going to show them to you. I will say in the close-ups I'll go through everything you get in the box, what it looks like, what it feels like and so on but there is an extended segment that is going to take you through the full menu system explaining what everything does and how you can customise it. And as always at the very end we'll have a summary and I'll let you know exactly what I think. Close-ups. When you buy your Draco, it's going to come in a box just like this. On the back we have a list of the contents and you have all the technical spec written here on the side. Scratch and check here for authenticity and you'll also get the colour of the device with a little sticker. Take the sleeve off and underneath you've got the modified logo once again and inside here we have a box which is hiding underneath the lid and underneath you'll find the mod. Inside that little box you'll find a warranty registration card, a USB lead and one user manual that covers the basics on everything you really need to know about this device. Now this is a brand new one that I've just taken out the box. Uh, I've had a prototype of this for going on quite some time. Uh, I also have this one here as well that I've been testing out but uh, I'll stick with the blue one just now. The mod is 92.8 millimeters top to bottom, 50 millimeters across here and 29.4 millimeters across the top. It is a zinc alloy material, you know the body zinc alloy. Uh, we also have, this is a G10 this material here. It's like a, how to explain it, it's like a, a composite. It's a fiberglass laminate type material. If you go and do some Google Foo, you'll get more details on that. But it, it you know, actually feels quite nice. And it's also unusual and, and I kind of like it for that. We have a fire button here. Nice and clicky. We have some venting down the bottom here and also on the other side as well. Our battery door, we just click this here and this should spring open, there we go, and we have positive and negative clearly indicated here and this is a Joule 18650 mod. To close it, just down it goes. Up the top we have a spring loaded 510 pin, I've not had any issues putting any atties on this at all. And just quickly measuring again, I mean I would say you would get up to a 27mm atty on here without any overhang whatsoever. There's a 25mm scrape on there just now. Uh, so yeah, 25 millimeters, and that's looking okay on there. That's a 22 millimeter sky drop uh, from East Smoke Guru on there, and it is looking a little bit lost up there because uh, th this is a big old mod. This, and I really do think you need quite a big tank to offset that. We do have a two-inch screen on the front here, and uh, I'll pop some batteries in, and we'll go through the menu system and explain that away. Uh, we have, once again, we have our fire button here, we have a select button here, and up and down buttons here. We also have a USB port here, you can charge your batteries through this, and you can also do firmware upgrades as well. Popping the batteries in, once again, just click that and flip that open, so negative there, positive there, and just, I tend to, what I do is just put my fingers on either side here and just squeeze down and it normally just clicks into place. So don't put your finger anywhere near this bit, just, you know, on either side, click, and that's it done. So we'll peel this off just so you can see a brand new screen and see how clear this is. You can see here, the screen's massive. It is, it's huge. Uh, you can dictate, you know, you can change how long it takes before this screen goes to sleep and when it times out. You can change the clock. And the other thing is, it remembers the time when you take the batteries out, which is, is good to see, I like that. We also have this like fancy animations like this going on and you'll see more of that as we go along. But five clicks. Uh, to unlock the device. So, and if you keep an eye on the little padlock here, one, two, three, four, five, and that's us. Now, there are many customizations that you can do to this screen, so don't be, if this doesn't look appealing to you, don't worry about it, you can change this. There are 
there's a different theme. So we have the up and down button here and we have a select button here. So if you watch the screen, if I just start using the up and down button here, if I click it once, you can see I've obviously started off down the bottom, so the wee cog was flashing away there. I've now moved up, I can adjust my wattage, move up again and I can change through here as well. So every time I'm pushing the up and down buttons, it's taking me to different points in the screen. So let's start off with power, push the middle button, and that takes me into the menu system. And then I can go through power, bypass, stainless steel, nickel, titanium. You can see two dots down the bottom here as well. So I could, you know, flip down like this. You can also go back the way as well, it would be quicker. And it would take me into the TCR values and the memory slots. So click back and just to show you you don't have to go right down and through a whole menu system I can click back and come out the other side as well so if I go into stainless steel just now so push this button here you can see I've now gone into stainless steel mode now using the up and down button you can see that I can actually change the wattage when I'm in temp mode as well which is it's always a positive you know I can go and change the temperature here I can go back and change the you know the material or I'm back down in the little cog again which will take us into the main menu. You can also see in the screen that we have you know we have our battery indicators here and we have all the other relevant information that you need when you're vaping. All the other fancy animations and whatnot, they don't do a thing, they don't mean a thing, they're just there to make everything look pretty. So let's just push a button here and you know I could go back up to stainless steel, push the middle button, go back into materials and we'll go back up to power, push the middle button again, and we're back here. So it is easy to navigate and to get around this screen. I don't have any real issues with it, using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you want to go into settings, this is where there's a, a lot more stuff going on here. So you can see my little cogs flashing, push the middle button, and there is a lot more to choose from here. So you can see down the bottom that we've got one, two, three, four different screens that we can go through. And through each of these screens, you have different options. First one, we've got our puff counter. You can clean puffs from there. Uh, I'm not really interested in that. That's never appeals to me. You can specify how long you get when you push the fire button, the cutoff period. You can change that there. Stress resistance is, it just goes off and it checks the resistance of the coil. It forces the mod to actually check and see what the resistance of the coil is on your ATI. TCR values, you can go in here, change that. We have our power curve, we can go in here and we can actually set a power curve. And there are various slots as well, just up the top here you have different slots so you can have different power curves. So using the left and right button here, you can see that I'm going through these different slots. I'll pick the first one, click that, and then we get the crosshairs coming up and you can start playing about. So you can see using the up and down button here, I'm changing the position of the wattage. Uh, so this is, I think this is a five second curve and these are 0.5 increments. So go on to the next one and then you start off again. So we'll just put in a quick curve here. And once you get to the end, it just switches off the crosshairs and that's you. It's perhaps one of my, I usually have a bit of a, I find setting your curve to be a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes, but I really like the way they set the power curve on this one and it's one of my favorites to date. For those of you that like to use your, you know, your temperature mode, you have a compensate mode here as well. You can put in adjustments here that will compensate for your, your ambient temperature. You can specify that, you know, if you want Celsius or Fahrenheit, we also have a boost mode here. So we have a standard, powerful, and a powerful plus. What will happen in just a boost or just power mode is you're going to get a 133% vape. So you're going to get a 33% increase over your standard vape for the first 0.5 seconds. And for the next one, for the powerful plus, if you like, it's going to be a 50% increase on your standard vape for 0.5 seconds. Now you have an auto lock time here, so you can set a time that when the, the mod is just going to lock itself out. So there we have 60 minutes here. And going down we also have a sleep timer here as well. And I just want to say, if you want to adjust anything, I should have said that, if you just push the middle button when you're in this section, so that's it selected. And you can see that I can then move this up and down and change whatever value is in here. 
and I'll just push the middle button once again and that's it accepted and I can now go on to the next screen. Now here's where the customization starts. So we have two themes to begin with. Uh, so I'm obviously in theme A here just now. If we switch it to theme B, and then I'm just gonna accept that. We'll go back to the main screen and you can see that we have a totally different look. We'll go back into here again and I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna come back the other way to get to the theme settings. It's quicker. You can also go down and you can change the, there's clock types here you can change as well. Uh, if we go down again, you can then change fonts. So we'll go down here and you can see that it, it shows you what you're going to get if you make that selection. So you can change those fonts. So if you've got crap eyesight like me, then uh, something like this works a lot better. Going down again, we then have wallpapers that we can change. I will point out that you can only change these wallpapers when you are in theme B. It doesn't work in theme A, you have to be in theme B. So I can go in here, let's make a selection. And you can see that I'm getting all the different types of wallpapers that are available. And we'll stick with this one. You can also go down to brightness, we'll select that. So you can turn this brightness right up and it will round robin. Go back one and we'll set it as bright as it'll go. The last few are self-explanatory. You know, we have our date and time. You can restore all the settings to default. Uh, we have software versions and things like that. And we can just go back and get out. But you can get out at any time just by pushing the fire button. And it'll take us back to here. I've got a, an atty on here just now. And just to show you what happens when you're firing. Uh, so if we push the fire button, you'll see that we have this indicator here. If I let go, you know, it stays there. And that just, it's just a visual representation telling you how long you were firing for. On this side, it does go up and then disappears once you take your finger off. Now this, if it just goes up a few bars and nothing happens, then you're pretty much in standard mode. But I'm in powerful plus just now and you'll see that it comes up and then it drops a couple of bars. That's I, that's the only way that I know right now that I'm in something other than standard mode. If I go back in here and set this to standard, and then we go back out and I push this again, then check the wee bar on the side. See how it just went up and nothing dropped off there? That's how I know I'm in standard mode. Just change my wallpaper here. Uh, and once again, remember you can only change your wallpaper when you're in theme B. You can't do it in theme A. Uh, so. I will point out, you can see here when I push this, you do get different warning screens coming up. So you have like ones for a short circuit, you know, it's for too hot, if you've been firing too long, or low battery, you have totally different screens. And, and it's nice to see that. You also see when I plug in the USB lead here that uh, we do get a screen coming up and it shows you how the batteries are progressing when they're charging. Just to show you, uh, I'm vaping on the Hassar RDTA here. I've got a stainless steel building, 420 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, about 35 watts. I've been vaping this pretty dry. You can see it's almost bone dry there. And if we fire away, every time I'm pushing it, I'm getting a little burst of power, but then it's just, you know, there's nothing. It's putting no power to this at all, hardly. And you can see the bar going up at the side here, and it should say timed out. There we go. I've just put a little bit of liquid back on this and hopefully this should fire away. There we go. So temp control for me has been working quite well. You can also see that when you put a new atty on you get this little screen popping up as well which is quite smart. So the Draco, how did I get on with it and what do I think? Right, hands up. Uh, I'm not a huge, and, and most people if you're watching my videos in the past, you will know that I'm not, this is not my kind of mod, this is not what I would vape myself normally uh, but in saying that there are several things that I really do like about this mod and there's a few things that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, the first ones are going to be that I do like, see this G10, this composite material here and here, it's, it's you know, it feels like a, it feels like a plastic but it's got a rough texture to it and it does make holding the mod a lot more comfortable and I just I do like that extra little design feature on it. Obviously the the two inch screen I mean it's a big old screen this it really is and it's as clear as a bit I mean it's crystal clear 
the brightness, you turn the brightness up on this and you can see this outside in the daylight, no problem at all. It's one of the best screens for clarity that I, I've ever come across in a mod. The only thing is though, is that I don't feel they've used that real estate to its best. Um, some of the fonts are, and yes, you can adjust the font. You can make the font larger. Even in saying that, it may take some tweaking to get the font right and to get the actual color of the font right with the wallpaper. It can be a little bit of a juggling act to get it bang on. I do find that, you know, just for the default themes, you know, when you go into the menu system and say you want to adjust something, you push the select button and it turns it red. And and it, depending what background you've got, what wallpaper you've got, being able to see that, see that small font can be quite difficult. So you do have to tweak the settings somewhat to get it to work as good as it should work all the time. Does that make sense? There are some things that, for example, when you're in boost mode, uh, you know, I, I would possibly like to have seen on here something that said, you know, standard, powerful, powerful plus, you know, something on here to show that. There's plenty of real estate here to put something on it, so I think that would have been helpful. But you can, you know, there is a little indicator bar there, but it's not obvious what setting you are on. Battery life has been, for the way I've been vaping it, uh, I'm not noticing any great, you know, huge drains on this. It's performing just as well as any other Dual 18650 mod at the wattages I'm vaping at, so no issues in that respect. The 510 up the top, it's taking all the atties I'm throwing on it. The door in the bottom, it's not, you know, it's not popping it open, it's easy to snap it shut and open it, so once again, all good there. The adjustment buttons, you know, the up and down and the select and the fire button, they all work well too. The only thing that I would maybe mention is when you are in this screen, when you're in this screen and you want to jump up and down and make a selection, there's nothing to say what you're already on. So you actually have to push an up or a down button and it goes to wherever you last were and and you might not remember where you last were so maybe something you know that there was highlighting exactly where you were previously would have been a good touch don't get me wrong it's it's not a ball buster I mean it's easy to work it your way around and so on but it, it may be a little nice to have down the line the other thing is when you're adjusting your wattage it's like trying to what how can I put it when you're filling your car with petrol and you know how you try to get it on see the, the 10 pound you don't want the penny you don't want the three pence you want 10 pound on the nose getting this it shoots all over the place uh, there is a method to it you will find it very very quickly but initially when you get the mod it's like it's all over the shop when I'm in temp control I do wish it would you know if I'm at 420 degrees Fahrenheit 30 watts and I'm pushing the fire button it doesn't tell you on the screen you know that Fahrenheit that temp reading doesn't go up and down the wattage doesn't go up and down it's a static reading I wish it was live so I, I knew what it was doing M maybe you don't need to know that because you can tell by the vape but it, it, I wish it was more interactive what you were seeing on the screen when you're using temp control the other thing is that temp control the wattage whilst you can adjust it and I always like that you can only adjust it from 30 to 150 watts now I don't think and and, and this is maybe wrong me pigeonholing or typecasting people but I don't think the kind of people that are going to be vaping below 30 watts uh, in temp control are necessarily going to buy this kind of mod uh, that might be wrong of me to say that but it's it's a negative that I will point out is that if you like below 30 watts and you want to use temp control then n no it doesn't that's not a positive at all i really do wish that i could lower the wattage and temp control right down taking a vape just now i'm at 45 watts i've got powerful plus selected i'm using one of modifying's own little sub tanks here and a 
listen, it fires, it's quick. There's no slouch, this, you know, straight away. Uh, so, do you know, vaping with this on a day-to-day -day basis, as I said, it's not my kind of mod, but because I've had the prototype and for so long and I've been playing about with this, I've actually grown to like this. I've grown to like this. I personally, I find that the, the menu system is, I'm not cool. Look at what I'm wearing. That I, I, You cannot call me cool by any stretch of the imagination. The menu system and, and the way it jumps about and, and the way the layout is, it's it's not aimed at an old fart like me. It's, it's aimed at a younger generation and I'm sure they'll love it. It's it's not necessarily my kind of thing, but you know, I'll tip my hat to them for doing something different. And that kind of sums up the whole mod for me. For £50, I, I, I think it's... I think it's pretty good. It's, once again, there's things on it that aren't aimed for old buggers like me, but I think that the people that this is aimed at will enjoy it. it. It seems to work well for me. It's firmware upgradable as well, and you can slap all your big tanks and atties on top of this. That's something else I did mention is that, you know, you put a 22 mil RDA, RTA on top of this thing, and it does look a little bit lost. You know, you put your big 25 atties on it, and then it looks okay. It comes in all the, the funky colors under the sun as well, and, it's not bad. It's not, it's definitely, as I tend to say, it's not shit at all. It really isn't. And that's it for the modified Draco. I did get this sent on to me free to review. As I said, it's going to be at about £50 in the UK. I know SteamIsland.com are getting them in very soon. It does say the 14th of June on Rob's website. So if you're interested, go along there and have a look. To you guys, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Until next time. Bye for now. To the side of me, you will find two other videos that I think you may be interested in. As always, please feel free to leave comments to the video below. Cheers.